As one of the leading Instagram growth experts, what are some biggest preconceived notions and misunderstanding about algorithms you see beginners facing today? Um, I would say one of the biggest, unders- I guess, misconceptions is people focusing too much on like the details of the algorithm instead of just trying to focus on creating engaging content because there's going to be lots of nuances and, and little little things that will change over time. And I think people put too much effort mm-hmm. into to learning the specifics of that as opposed to sort of focusing on creating content that is interesting and engaging that people can then engage with, which will always, always, always work in the algorithm on any platform um, for the rest of eternity. What is your opinion on buying a couple of hundred fake followers for totally fresh pages? Um, I wouldn't do it. I think a lot of, I know a lot of people that have done that sort of thing in a situation, like the only situation that I've, I would sort of somewhat agree with that is where people might be promoting a product and they want credibility on their account. But um, personally, I think it's better if you're trying to build an audience just to focus on, I mean, nowadays you can create reels and get a couple of hundred followers in a few days just by some interesting reels. Uh, So I would avoid it. I would focus on just building a genuine audience. Uh, You could spend a little bit of money on ads or influencers to to get those first couple hundred followers because I know it can be tough, but um, buying fake followers is only going to hurt you in the long run. Let's say a beginner wants to buy an existing Instagram account today. What is the best and safe way to do so? So there's not really a 100% safe way to do so. Um, there's always going to be, yeah, there's there's a lot of shady people that are, are buying and selling accounts, which makes it tricky. Uh, so I would personally only ever do it if you're dealing with someone you trust. So if you're buying or selling to someone that you trust uh, and, and so on, because there are like so many scams out there. Uh, and there's nothing you can really do to 100% keep yourself safe from those scams. You can go through some measures like only paying with PayPal goods and services, which means if you do get ripped off, you can tell PayPal and potentially get a refund depending on the situation. Um, there's, there's things you can do like that to keep yourself safe, which just have a, a basic agreement created to sort of go over that. And um, then you can show that to PayPal, PayPal goods and services trusting the person you're dealing with um those are three things you can do to make it safer but at the end of the day um especially when dealing with complete strangers there's a lot of scams out there in that niche which is part of the reason i don't do it a lot anymore and i don't really buy or sell accounts unless i'm dealing with people i know and and trust and have, have known for a while In one of your videos, you mentioned that you have been scammed before. Can you tell us how it happened as far as buying accounts? Yeah, so I've had times where I bought an account and I can't remember, it was a long time ago, but I bought an account and I believe the person who I bought it from had actually hacked it originally and they'd owned it for like six months, but they'd got it through hacking and then the original owner managed to get it back. So I'd bought an account used it for a couple of months and then sort of a couple of months later, it had been told that it had been returned to its original owner. And so I, I completely lost access to that. Um, so I got scammed in that sense where, yeah, I bought an account that was, I guess, originally hacked by someone. Uh, and I've also gone ahead and just bought accounts where the person was just flat out lying. And just once I'd sent payment, uh, they didn't give me the account and just disappeared. Uh, and that's why nowadays I will only ever use PayPal goods and services unless I really, really trust someone because that was the first and only time I've ever bought an account online. Not doing that. I used a payment platform called Squirrel, I think it was called. Uh, and, and that was it just got scammed because there's no way to get a refund there. So yeah, that was the first and last time I'll ever use a platform that doesn't have buyer protection. Is it possible to obtain a blue check for a theme page? If so, what does it take? It's pretty hard. Um, I, I think the only theme pages I've seen with this are theme pages that are almost turned into their own brands. So when a theme page gets big and they turn it into a brand, whether it be like a, whether they turn into a marketing agency, like um, 
there's the company Fuck Jerry, which is now like a media company, uh, or I think Millionaire Underscore Mentor, which is almost a brand in itself. Because to get verified, you need to get a lot of press from um, different outlets to prove that like your account or your brand or your business is somewhat notable. Uh, and it's pretty hard to get that for a theme page. Like you're not going to get big uh, media outlets like Forbes and Entrepreneur and so on, just writing about a random meme page. So if you run a theme page that you want to get verified, you, you sort of have to turn it into a brand that you can then get a lot of press for to become sort of like notable. Uh, and then you can go about submitting for verification through the app. And um, if you meet your requirements then you'll get it, but it is pretty hard if you're just a theme page and yeah. You run Millionaire Dead Dream. Yep. Running test, do you do yourself and which outsource? Um, yeah, so I have someone that helps me run that day to day. Uh, and so I more handle like the strategy side of things and they create the content and post on the account and I'll more be behind the scenes looking at how we're going to monetize it, how we can grow it faster, different tactics and so on. And then they implement it for me, um, which I've been doing for quite a while at this point. Do you choose the videos to feature? Um, some, not always the specific videos. Um, I often give them a bit of creative sort of freedom um, that if they think a video is going to do well or they've seen it do well before then they can go out and use it sometimes i'll give my suggestions but i'm more handling like the overall branding of it so what type of videos we want to focus on and if we want to do you know more inspiration or if we want to go more business or if you want to go more finance um, and what i look for in a video that can go viral and so on will we'll often i'll sort of lay that out and then they go and then do the sort of day-to-day -day specifics of finding which content they want to use and so on is it possible to completely automate a theme page and still uphold the engagement quality yeah for sure um, if you hire someone that can do it for you then you can still keep great engagement keep it growing keep it making an income if it is already uh, using sort of tools like uh, scheduling apps and so on I think it would be hard because you sort of lose that personal touch of like having a person doing it and engaging and so on. Uh, so if you hire someone, it's, it's totally possible to keep the engagement the same, if not better um, with time as they might be able to dedicate more to it. Would you say there are too many or not enough of growth experts for hire? Um, I would say there's quite a lot out there, but there's also quite a lot of bad ones out there. So I think for genuine people that know that can get results, uh, I think there is always going to be space in any industry for people that know how to come in and get awesome results. Uh, so I definitely think someone that knows what they're up to or that wants to learn the real strategies is always going to be room for them. Um, but there is becoming more and more people doing it. But yeah, a lot of them are using shady tactics or don't have a, a solid understanding. You also have your own agency. How many clients yep. are you currently working with? So at the moment, um, we tend to work with anywhere from sort of five to 10 clients a month. Um, I am at the moment putting a bit more effort into building out systems so that I can have people do the work for me and we can grow that. But at the moment, it, it sort of fluctuates between five to 10. How much do you charge for your services and what are the prices based off? So we charge $1,000 a month for just management. Um, we will we'll run an account, we'll do what we can to grow organically and, and we'll build it up there. Then we are in the process of adding other services. So we've got a growth service where we can sort of run shout outs to, to grow a client's account. So we can, I've got my own pages and other pages in like the business marketing motivation niche. And we can do shout outs on those accounts um, to grow the client. And that the pricing of that really just is pretty custom. It depends, you know, how much, like what sort of budget they're working with, how many promotions they want to get, which is going to obviously influence how much they grow from it. So that can range anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars a month for influencer marketing. Uh, and then that, that's pretty much the main two management and then influence of marketing uh which 
as far as how we come to those prices, it, I mean, I don't really have a perfect formula that I've, I've gone ahead and, and worked out to come to those prices. It's more just been based off the value I know we can bring a customer uh, as well as a bit of supply and demand. So when uh, pretty much with anything that I'm offering, whether it be something like this, I was selling shout outs back in the day and that was the main thing that I did. I'm always just looking at like uh, if I'm getting too busy, too booked, then you just slowly increase the prices to bring it back to a manageable workload. Or if you're not getting enough, then you can sort of slowly drop the prices to get more clients. And then as you're delivering more results, you need more people come to you, you can put them back up. Um, and it's sort of just a iterations of that over years. As far as agency growth, is there anything that prevents you from increasing the client's flow? Yeah, it probably just comes down to me not yet having the systems in place to do so, which is something I've put a bit more of a focus on the past few months, uh, trying to put systems in place so I can sort of remove myself from a lot of the day-to-day -day and that way we can scale up with good people on the team. But um, that's probably the main thing, sort of holding it back at the moment, which, yeah, is, is a bit of a focus currently. Four months ago, you said whether your agency outsources all of its work. Is that still the case? Uh, yeah, so we outsource uh, some parts of it, but not all of it. Um, so the obviously when we're buying shout-outs and so on, we're paying other people for the shout-outs and so on. And we've got other little services that we've outsourced, um, but still a lot of it is managed by me or my team. So I've got a couple of people that do work for me. So I guess that's outsourced, but um, I'm still a part of, I guess, the day-to-day -day management of it, which is a bit of a bottleneck, which is what we're trying to improve. Um, so everything just flows smoothly. It's well known that a good chunk of our generation's entrepreneurs is deep into the e-commerce hype. What has been your personal experience with it? Um, e-commerce is just uh, like selling physical products online, like dropshipping, or like e-commerce just generally selling online? The drop, dropshipping specifically. So I haven't done much of that. I did a little bit of it for a couple months. Um, I dived into it a few years ago. It's just a way to monetize same pages. But um, I never really did much of it. So I made a few thousand dollars off that, but um, I was just doing too many things at once. So I ended up just going back and focusing on building my theme pages and affiliate marketing uh, and then selling shout outs and so on on the side. What advice do you have for people that want to make money online, but have no idea which angle to approach from? I would just say focus on building some sort of skill which then can be profitable um, in the long run rather than trying to focus on, I guess, a specific side hustle. I would look at building some kind of skill. So whether that be maybe you learn sales and then you become a salesperson for a company, whether it be online or, or locally, uh, and you can do sales for them to make an income. Or maybe you go out and learn graphic design and you start doing graphic design and then you can get clients for that or Maybe you learn how to build audiences on Instagram, like what I've done. And then you learn how to monetize that. I would focus on picking a skill you want to learn and focusing on that and just focus on that one thing, whether it be sales, whether it be marketing, web design, graphic design, video editing, whatever it might be, pick a skill, focus on that, build up that skill set. And then over time, you'll be able to generate a, a good income from that because there's always going to be people that are willing to pay for someone that can make a great looking video or make an amazing website or generate sales for a business or generate leads for a business or, or so on. That would be my advice anyway. And that might be in the form of drop shipping. So maybe you go out and do drop shipping as a way to learn how to run Facebook ads and so on. Uh, and then you can do whatever you want with that. But I would focus on a skill would be my advice. What is your story behind your decision on becoming an Instagram YouTuber? Um, so I didn't really have a big, uh, I guess, reason behind it. I was sort of giving out some Instagram tips and tricks on Instagram stories and on Facebook a little bit. Um, and then I just wanted something a little bit more scalable where I could put out content and it was a bit like, instead of making an Instagram story once and then 24 hours later, it's gone, I could 
give some tips and tricks and advice and put it into a YouTube video that could then stay around for years and people could find it or I could send it to people and they could learn from it and get a result out of it. So it sort of just came naturally like that. There wasn't a big moment that I decided I wanted to do it. And then over time, I just really enjoyed doing it. So I stuck at it and um, built up that audience. Do you have any mentors? If so, can you name them? I don't have any, like, I don't really have one specific mentor as such. I've got lots of people that I've learned from over the years. Um, there was an account, Millennia underscore mentor, which helped me out a lot in my first couple of years of building Instagram accounts. He taught me a lot of what I, I knew back then about building accounts and uh, was great for networking and so on. So he helped me with tips a lot back then. Um, since then, I've had different people help me throughout the years, but I would say I've almost learned more just off networking uh, and so on than having like a dedicated mentor. I've learned lots of different friends that I've built over the years um, in the industry and so on. I haven't really had one, one person guiding me through this whole time. What are your thoughts on formal marketing education like college? Um, I guess it depends what you want to do, but if you want to get really good at marketing to work for yourself, um, or to, to get into like the social media world or so on. Um, I don't think it's as valuable as it's made out to be. I'm sure there's plenty of good stuff in there, but considering you can spend, let's say a hundred dollars and get five to 10 really, really good books on marketing from people that have built massive marketing companies and you can learn their insights for like a hundred dollars. You can get five to 10 of those books, which will teach you a ton about marketing, probably more than you'll learn in most college degrees. Um, so I, I mean, there's probably some good stuff in there and, and potentially to get into some corporate jobs, you might need that kind of training, but to get really good at marketing itself for yourself or for a, a business that's just looking to get a result or to start a, a marketing agency, like a social media marketing agency, I think you could learn a lot more in a lot less time for a way 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 less money just by reading books and watching youtube videos listening to podcasts that's just my personal opinion anyway maybe i'm wrong but i mean i haven't done a marketing degree so it's hard for me to comment there but yeah i think you can learn much more looking at people who have built massive marketing companies and industry leaders than you can from college but could be wrong you mentioned books. Do you have any recommendations, some books? Yeah, so I really like the 4-Hour Workweek was probably one of the first that I guess I read on like online business and so on, which was really good. Um, then I've also got a few back here from Russell Brunson. These books are good too. Um, dot .com Secrets, Expert Secrets, and Traffic Secrets, all from... Russell, all really good on, on digital marketing and so on. Uh, and I recently got an, an ebook, an audio book called, I can't actually even remember, $100 million, $100 million offers from Alex Hormozy, which um, is also really good. Uh, so I would say if you start with those and then go from there, the likes of Seth Godin is also pretty good um, around marketing. He's got a lot of good stuff. Tell us about your work with Russell. Yeah, so I did about a year of growing their Instagram account, um, helped them go from about 40K followers to about 500K followers uh, in the space of about 15 months. So we would just consult them on what content to post and then did a bunch of influencer marketing for them to grow them and get them results um, and did that. And yeah, we also helped them. We got them the username ClickFunnels on TikTok and got them both as personal and business account verified on TikTok. So have done a fair bit of stuff with them over the years, not currently doing anything with them, but if something comes up, then we'll definitely explore it then. Great, great team to work with, great people. And um, yeah, great, great lads. Should we expect TikTok videos? Probably not, purely because it's pretty much the same as Reels. So you can take anything that I've said about Reels and apply it to TikTok and get the, get get great results on TikTok. But the majority of my audience is int interested in Instagram. So when I, I've noticed if I create a video on TikTok, then 
most people won't click on it and YouTube will see that. And then, so they'll show it to like very few people. So even if it's great advice, then no one's going to read it. Um, but if I make a video about Instagram reels, which more people are interested in, a lot of people will click on it. A lot of people will see it. And then within the video, I can mention that this is also applicable to TikTok. So probably not like that many TikTok specific videos, but you can apply anything that is said for reels to TikTok and, and get results with it. What are your thoughts on the competition between Reels and TikTok? I think it's great. I think competition between social media is awesome. Um, it makes them both have to fight to be better at what they do and, and provide a better platform and be better for creators and, and better monetized for creators. And I think competition in general is a great thing in, in business. Do you think Instagram will be TikTok eventually? I think eventually... If I was making a bet, I would say it's more probable that Instagram will beat TikTok. I think there's a chance that TikTok will beat Instagram, but I think it's more likely that Instagram will beat TikTok purely because Instagram, it's easier for Instagram to adapt TikTok's features to Instagram and then remove the need for TikTok than it is for TikTok to do the reverse uh, because people go to TikTok for that short, sharp format of content. And Instagram can easily incorporate into Instagram and then people don't need TikTok. Whereas TikTok can't really do that to Instagram because if they made themselves a photo sharing app, no one would go there. So I don't think that TikTok will be out Instagram in the long run, but it could happen. I just think it's unlikely. I think Instagram will win. What are your long-term goals for the future? Um, I don't necessarily have a specific numbers or anything that i want to achieve i pretty much just want to keep building my business um keep building my investments and just enjoy living life have some fun uh whilst doing so definitely want to get out and be able to travel a lot more once the world opens up a fair bit um but yeah i don't i don't really have a specific number that i'm chasing i'm more just putting in the work every day to to build what i'm doing and and enjoy the journey so far so yeah well thank you very much for being an awesome vest no worries thanks for having me